Last year, I stated on this podium that the situation on the Korean Peninsula was nearing to the brink of a nuclear conflict. One year has passed since then. Now the security landscape of the Korean Peninsula is quite different from that time and becoming much more acute. From the beginning of this year, the U.S. and its allies have staged joint military exercises one after another with various code names such as Freedom Shield, Freedom H, and Combined Air Drill in the vicinity of the DPRK, thus heightening military tension and hostile atmosphere in the region. Much more serious is the fact that the anti-DPRK nuclear war machine, Nuclear Consultative Group, engineered by the U.S. and ROK last year, is now in full operation, and simulation nuclear war drills are conducted to put into practice an actual attempt to use nuclear weapons against the DPRK. Joining here are the member states of NATO, which is an outside force beyond the region, and an exclusively exclusive military bloc. They are strengthening military cooperation with the U.S. and ROK, abusing the signboard of UN command, which should have been dismantled decades ago in accordance with the UNGA resolution. They are storing up military confrontation still further by deploying warships and aircraft in the hotspot region of the Korean Peninsula. Such being the case, they blame us for threatening them and the peace and stability of the region and beyond with the nuclear weapons. Then who had developed and used nuclear weapons against humanity for the first time in history? Who has introduced nuclear weapons into the Korean Peninsula in the last century and posed nuclear threat to the DPRK over the century? Who on earth is talking unhesitatingly about the end of regime of a sovereign state and maintaining first use of nuclear weapons against the DPRK as its national policy? It is not that the DPRK's position of nuclear weapons makes the U.S. hostile towards us. The truth is that the U.S. hostility and nuclear threat to the DPRK for over 70 years compelled us to make a historic decision to possess nuclear weapons. Our nuclear weapons were just made and exist to defend ourselves. As such, any talk about our nuclear threat only proves a conceived hostility towards the DPRK. The security environment of the Korean Peninsula is bound to be intricately complicated through to the next generation as well, unless the U.S. and its followers change their confrontational and aggressive nature. Under such circumstances, it is an indispensable exercise of sovereign rights for the DPRK to maintain powerful strength capable of defending national security interests and guaranteeing peaceful development. The situation on the Korean Peninsula has not entered into war, even though it is fraught with extreme tension. It is totally attributable to our country's powerful war deterrence, which helps stave off threat of aggression and keep the balance of power in the region. Therefore, we continue to increase our war deterrence capabilities, not only from our obligation to ensure national security, but also from our mission to maintain peace and security in the region and beyond. Comrade Kim Jong-un, President of the State Affairs of the DPRK, said that we can choose either dialogue or confrontation, but we should go further in getting ourselves fully prepared for confrontation. This is the review and conclusion drawn from the 30-year-long DPRK-U.S. relations, he said. When it comes to the right, right to self-defense, a legitimate right of a sovereign state, we will never go back to the point in the far-off past. When it comes to the national prestige, we will never bargain over it with anyone, for it was gained through the bloody struggle of the entire Korean people. Whoever takes office in the United States, we will only deal with a state entity called the U.S., not the mere administration. Likewise, any U.S. administration will have to face the DPRK, which is different from what the U.S. used to think. Mr. President, it is the invari invariable external policy of the DPRK government 
to champion justice and peace, aspire after progress and development, and promote friendship and solidarity. This is also the idea running through the UN Charter. From this viewpoint, the DPRK government stands strongly against the acts of dividing international political arena into two camps with unlawful double standards, giving precedence to their hegemonic interests and disturbing peace and stability. At the present, many factors obstruct attainment of the SDGs set forth by the UN. The most critical among them are the high-handedness, arbitrariness, and double standards of the U.S. and certain UN member states. Since, last, since October last year, the indiscriminate massacre by Israeli authorities has claimed more than 40,000 Palestinian civilian lives in Gaza Strip, including many children and women, and thus exposed a nation to a complete extinction. The UN exists to prevent the recurrence of the scourge of war that had inflicted untold sufferings to mankind. It is really shameful and deplorable that such act against humanity has persisted for one year. It is highly imaginable that one state is immune to any censure and sanction, even after committing such a horrible massacre. This is entirely due to the patronage of the U.S., a permanent mem member of the U.N. Security Council. The U.S. has vetoed UNSC resolutions on bringing peace to the Middle East on as many as five occasions, overriding the wishes of the international community to see the ethnic cleansing stopped by its ally. This is how the U.S. has discredited the authority of the U.N. and incited crime against humanity. This notwithstanding, the U.S. is branding as a threat and provocation the legitimate exercise of the right to self-defense by a sovereign state, which did not do any harm to anyone. As for the Ukrainian situation dragged on for almost three years by the U.S. and Western countries, they are shifting the responsibility on other countries, even though it was the result of eastward expansion of NATO and provision of lethal equipment amounting to astronomical sum of money to their ally. The reason behind the U.S.'s abusive invectives about the normal developmental relations between other countries is in fact to vindicate its unprincipled political and military support to its ally and justify the forming of military alliances on a global scale. Justice or injustice is judged according to whether the actor is pro-U.S. or an independent country, and the United Nations is misused for political aims of an individual country. Such a reality should no longer, no longer be tolerated and allowed. I once again express a serious concern with a strong denunciation over the fact that peace and security in many parts of the world are seriously threatened, and the spirit of the UN Charter is debased by the arbitrariness and high-handedness of a single, arrogant, permanent member state of the UN Security Council. I also express deep condolences to the Palestinian victims of the Israeli genocide and their bereaved families, and exchange unchanged support and solidarity to the Syrian people in their struggle to regain the occupied Syrian Occupy Golan Heights and safeguard territorial integrity. Mr. President, the reform of the present global governance regime should be oriented to realizing impartiality, equity, and justice. The United Nations will regain its sacred image only when it strictly adheres to the principles of sovereign equality, non interference in internal affairs, impartiality, and objectivity, and eliminates a high handedness and arbitrariness, as well as biased double standards practices in all activities in conformity with the purposes and principles enshrined in the UN Charter. Mr. President, a just, peaceful, and prosperous world remains the desire of the DPRK SF. It is the consistent stand of the DPRK government to make a positive effort with independence against imperialism as its immutable first national policy to realize international justice based on the respect for sovereignty and non-interference in internal affairs 
equality and mutual benefit and establish a new international order, the DPRK will in the future too cooperate with all the countries and nations which oppose and reject aggression, interference, domin domination and subordination and aspire to independence and justice, transcending differences in ideals and systems. We will also develop diversified exchanges and cooperation with the countries that respect our country and take a friendly attitude to us. Thank you. Je remercie 